today as I offer these reflections, I acknowledge Deacon Jerry as the author of the words you hear. On this last Sunday in Advent, we look back and we remember that our God always keeps his promises. For the celebration of the nativity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we will commemorate on Christmas is the fulfillment of a promise. And even more wonderful is the way in which God fulfills God's promises. It's often unexpected, and it always far exceeds our wildest imagination. You know, it's been said that we can never outdo God in generosity. We seek the temporal, but God's concern for us is the eternal. His plans are always so much greater. We can see this in the connection between our Old Testament reading today and the Gospel, for they are wonderfully linked together. It starts with a good intention that comes from a heart that loves God more than anything in the world. But it soon turns around and becomes promises that God will make, some of which contain within them the promise, cloaked in mystery, but revealed in the fullness of time and made known to us in the gospel. In our first reading, King David is told by the prophet Nathan that the Lord will establish a house for you. Now, short term, there will be the construction of the temple, which David's son Solomon will accomplish during his reign. But the whole understanding of house is really a much larger and farther reaching promise. For it speaks in terms of the establishment of a dynasty, a sequence of rulers from the same line of descent. The Lord is revealing that from David's lineage will come forth one who will rule over all God's people. I will raise up your heir sprung from your loins. This heir will be a son of David meaning a descendant of David. This will start with Solomon, but will find its ultimate fulfillment in Christ. This is why at the Vigil Mass on Christmas Eve, we will hear the gospel reading of the genealogy of Christ. We read that because we're making the connection that Jesus is of the house of David. The king is further told, your house and your kingdom shall endure forever. Now, if the house speaks of David's dynasty, how could that be? How can a king's reign be eternal? For the reign of a king ends with the death of a king, unless this is a different kind of king, a king like never before, and not just a king, but the king. So, within these promises comes the promise the promise of the coming of a king who would be a son of David, but who would rule eternally. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. God's promise is fulfilled in the Incarnation and his plan made known through the Annunciation, for our God always keeps his promises. So let us look to the heavens with thankful hearts. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wonderful deeds. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May he fill all the earth with his glory. May we receive with joy and thanksgiving this most precious gift, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Son of David, Lord of Lords, and King of Kings.